Welcome to my channel Daily Bulletin News. Days of our lives just showed us how to turn flagging stories into must-see TV, even as it teased a number of exits, but who's actually leaving? If you've been away from days of our lives for a while, it's safe to say, now is the time to give it another shot. The writers are back, the storylines are getting wrapped up fast, and everything is happening now, from an epic non-wedding, to Gabby's imminent release, and Jude's paternity truth. This week was the most fun I've had in ages. Daytime at its best. I have been waiting all week to talk about that wedding, and for all the right reasons. Seriously. I was not excited about it at all when the temp writers were planning it, and I was not excited about the plan to push Constantin to embezzle and confront him. I just wanted it to be over. But Monday's episode made me want to stand up and slow clap. If head writer Ron Carlovati sees this somehow, bravo. That episode almost turned the entire saga around. Sorry, but there was a lot of Constantin stretching believability to turn around. Stay tuned and subscribe the channel. Plus, using Sander to kill Constantin was phenomenally perfect. Not just from the standpoint that he's actually Victor's son getting revenge, but also of his personality. Sander was the only Kyriakis there who was a cold-blooded killer. I loved how he just strode in, snatched the gun from Brady and was like screw this. He hurt everyone I care about, no, not you Theresa. I'm done. Everyone throwing him under the bus afterwards was really slimy, but hey, I expect no less. That's going to play into the conflict when he learns he's Victor's son. Can't boot me out of the family now, can you? I'm glad they wrapped that up fast, though, and didn't press charges. I think the fans would have revolted if Sander got in trouble for offing their hated Constantin. A fru creaky wheels. I was a bit iffy about the fa Victor, though. I think less may have been more. His voice, a number of folks suggested it sounded like Stephen Nichols, was great at first, but like with all imitations, the more you see, the less authentic they seem. But yeah, they needed something to make this all make sense with Khan's conflicting stories about why they were enemies, but he expected something in the will, etc., etc. And as for the pawn, I appreciate the added suspense, but come on, folks, destroy the stupid card already. Does Marlena for some reason need it for the deprogramming? Enough. And I'll hand it to the show for that red herring about John leaving. He's not. The show confirmed it with us. And I didn't think he'd be gone gone out of nowhere, but they did make it seem like he might be off our screens for a bit. Actually the show spent a lot of time this week making us think that about characters. A dimmer a dozen... By the end of the week, though, we pivoted back to the Damaras, which was less exciting at first. But then things got interesting. Kristen becoming the new CEO was a bit out of nowhere, but oh, EJ's going to blow his lid. It was set up well with him smirking to Abby that he'll be permanent CEO soon. And it seemed a bit drastic that suddenly now, after six months of doing nothing to get Gabi out, Stefan suddenly decides it's time for a jailbreak, but I think that was mainly due to the interim writing stretching it out. Because I also loved that the setup from back when Sloane messed up switching DNA tests paid off after eight months. I don't think it would have been that long without the strike, but the way it played out from Stefan deciding to go on the run, to Kristen offering her getaway swag, because of course she has it, to him grabbing the wrong envelope and seeing EJ isn't Jude's dad was kind of brilliant. As long as the payoff is clever and worth it, I'm okay with waiting for one. I guess that's kind of how the Constantin thing ended, albeit unintentionally thanks to the writers returning. Goodbye and hello. There's no way Sifan is going anywhere now that he knows this. We know from spoilers next week that he'll be confronting EJ rather than skip town so I have a feeling he's going to twist EJ's arm now to get help with Gabi. EJ thinks he's in the clear enough that he's cheerfully helping Eric divorce an absentee Sloan. Speaking of people I don't think are going anywhere, Johnny and Channel. I don't know why, but something feels off about this exit. They're making too big a deal out of it when others get shuffled off with barely a mention. 
there's got to be another shoe that drops that makes them stay. Stay tuned and subscribe the channel.